Hey guys, welcome back to Team Deathslinger. My name is Peter, and today uh, we're going to talk about Digimon. And um, I don't think it's a secret around here that uh, we think Power Creep is a little bit silly in this card game. Uh, I think some people still feel that way. There was a lot of discussion with Magmon when Magmon X came out uh, about if that card was too much. Um, and some people feel like the card game is headed in a direction that is just uh, a lot of silly cards coming out that do too much, too strong, uh, and it's just kind of an unsatisfactory direction for the card game to go. Um, so we're going to take a look at perhaps what the card game could do differently. Um, I just want to preface by saying I actually think the card game is heading into a better spot. Um, I like how the tier lists are looking in BT17 onwards. We can see uh, in the Japanese meta that things are starting to get better, more powerful decks come out. Uh, and it starts to dilute the pool of topping decks and give you more variety back on what you can actually play. Um, but these are just some thoughts for maybe uh, if you want to solve the issue of uh, Digimon without necessarily um, just throwing a ban list out there that drops everyone's favorite card from the game. So uh, so Power Creep is insane. Uh, we all talk about it, or at least it was a topic of conversation pretty recently. Uh, Magnamon X being the bit first big offender uh, if, unless you count Apocalymon or Anubismon, uh, but those cards got dropped pretty quickly. Uh, Magnamon X seems to be here to stay. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Uh, Ogudamon, another really good example of a card that uh, some people really didn't like. Um, the deck was just by far the best deck uh, that came out in the EX6 box itself. Uh, I guess you could debate Ragna, because Ragna just did really well in the regionals, but um, Ogudamon seemed to be what everyone was expecting to do the best. Um, and then in BT17, we know that Ancient Garurumon uh, is supposed to be quite silly, and uh, Imperial Dramon will continue to be quite silly. Uh, and that's kind of the, the gist of people feeling like everything's getting silly. All this power creep is too much. Uh, a lot of people kind of murmur around saying that they don't want to play the game if it's going to get uh, like this. Like what BT17 is looking like, uh, EX7 not so much, uh, and then BT18. So... I want to bring up delay effects. Uh, I think that there is a lot of kind of wasted potential for delay effects, and BT17 actually starts to do delay effects better. Um, so we all think of delay effects as memory boosts, trainings, uh, things that necessarily get you memory. Um, and I would almost argue that most people associate delay effects with searchers too. Um, and I think that's kind of a shame. Uh, Biting Crush was kind of the first delay effect card that uh, I saw, and I went, wow, that is, that is doing delay effects right. And I really hated the card at the time because it was the only card that does what it does. Uh, so if you don't know what the card does, the delay effect says when an, uh, when an effect plays an opponent's Digimon, uh, you get to play Leviamon from your trash without paying the cost, and then you would pop Digimon on the board by the Leviamon's effect. And what this effectively does is introduce kind of a trap mechanic to the game uh, to stop your opponent from doing something or to force them to navigate around that situation. Uh, and that's cool when there's lots of cards that do that. Uh, and Biden Crush was kind of stuck being the only card that did that for a little bit. Uh, and then in BT17, we get these cards, these like movie options, uh, kind of like Return to the Ancestors, where when one of your Digimon with the free trade would be deleted, other than by one of your effects, you get to delay uh, by digivolving that Digimon into a card with Imperial Digimon in its name in the hand without paying the cost, you prevent that deletion. So the delay effect gives you a free Evo and a pr protection effect, uh, which I think these, these movie cards that do uh, these trap-like effects... Um, are really cool, um, and I would like to see more of them. So I'm glad that BT17 is kind of moving in that direction. Um, and I think if there's going to be more of these delay type effects, that we should have cards that can actually remove them. Um, some other people have voiced their opinion that delay effects are too strong. You can't interact with them, they just sit on the board, um, and you're just kind of stuck dealing with it, whatever it locks you out of, uh, knowing that you can't choke your opponent, um, things like that. So BT18 will introduce uh, the Gospel of the Fallen Angel. So the delay effect says by digivolving one of your Digimon with Lusamon in its name into a Digimon card with Lusamon in its name from your trash with the Digivolution cost reduced by three, trash one option card in your opponent's battle area. So this is going to remove uh, a delay effect card effectively from your opponent's board when you digivolve into a Lusamon card in the trash. Uh, and I think that's cool. Um, I think we should have more cards that do that. We should have more delay effects that have... Uh, effects that Im interact with your opponent's game actions during their turn, and then we should have ways to remove that. Uh, and I think what that does is kind of indirectly tone down the power of your opponent's Digimon because they can only do so many things without interacting with one of your delay cards, um, and then we, we also introduce a way to uh, remove that interaction if you are uh, able to do that. Uh, unfortunately, the Gospel of the Fallen Angel is like the only card, I believe, in BTA team that's going to do that. So when there's only one card that removes delay effect cards, it's gimmicky and it doesn't accomplish anything. There's also not enough 
delay effect cards yet uh, that you're necessarily worried about in every deck you play. Uh, which brings me to my next point. I think we should have new floodgates. We all know the generic floodgates that say players can't reduce play cost, players can't play Digimon by effects, uh, your opponent can't reduce Digivolution costs, and you can't gain memory except with Tamer effects. Uh, I would like to see generic Digimon that in different capacities deal with delay effect cards. Maybe uh, a rookie that just says uh, delay effects can't be activated, or maybe option cards can't be trashed from your opponent's battle area, something like that. Uh, maybe a level 4 where you do something and you get rid of a delay effect card. Um, maybe you could get a level 5 even that places a an option from your trash into your battle area so that you get the delay effect but you don't get the actual main effect of that card. Like you could place a training in your battle area to get the delay effect, or you could place uh, one of those trap uh, movie cards or like the gospel card or uh, I think there's some other ones at BT18 you could just place that in your battle area to get the delay effect uh, and ideally these cards would be generic so that you could splash them into other decks and not necessarily just be stuck in engine for those cards which brings me to my next point as well uh, more generic cards please um, I think the design of the game is taking a turn where it's very obvious what Bondi wants you to play uh, things are set up tribal for a reason um, and I think older cards have staples that are good because they're generic, like Blitz Omni, for example. Uh, any red or blue deck that just wants a free swing for game, you're playing an aggressive deck in those colors, Blitz Omni is a perfectly good card to use. Uh, it is strong, and it has a protection effect. It's just perfectly serviceable in any of those decks. Uh, the ST1 Greymon, you can put that in just about any red deck, uh, as long as you're not really, really hinging on names, um, and it becomes a powerful tool to use. Um... In newer, in newer card design, uh, it's very, very tribal. Everything wants to digivolve on things in name, or the effects only trigger for cards with thing in name, like Gallantmon in name, Greymon in name, stuff like that. Uh, like I think BT17 Agumon is a great example of a design fail. Uh, it says all turns when one of your Kosuke Kisakatas is played, gain one memory, draw one. The reboot inheritable is nice, but this card would literally be just as effective if it said when one of your Black Tamers is played, or if when one of your Tamers is played, gain a memory and draw a card. Um, you would still see it mostly used in black. You wouldn't see it in every single black deck. It's not strong enough that you'd want to play it in all your black decks, probably. Um, but it would be good, uh, and it would fulfill the purpose of using it for what you want to use it for. I mean, as it stands right now, Kosuke doesn't even really get played in the Dorumon deck, um, so this card is kind of just a dud because it's it's locked to that tamer. Um, I think a great new card that does generic design properly is Bastemon. That's why it's in like all of my purple deck profiles. I mean, it's got Scapegoat, which is a generically good effect. It plays your level 3 from Trash, which granted is more niche to purple than it would be other colors, but it is a generic effect within its color that has a purpose, uh, and it's good. And then the Inheritable is also generic. It's not locked to a name, it just gives you a free body, which again, relevant for purple, not so much relevant for other decks, but I think the point stance. Uh, it does what it wants to do, and it does it well for any purple deck that could use that. We're not locked into a, a tribal thing for Bastimon. So I would just like to see more cards that fulfill generic roles, uh, more generic cards that deal with delay effect cards, more delay effect cards, um, and then a sideboard. If we're going to add all of these generic cards that do generic things, and all of these layers of potentially interaction, uh, more nuance in how decks actually can interact with each other, uh, I think we should have side decking. I have a whole video on side decking. Um, I just think that it's something it's it's time we get side decking in Digimon. I know some people feel that the more powerful decks just get more powerful because they have the option to side deck against their counters, which that's fair if we don't have generic cards that deal with other things, I guess is my point. Um, so that's kind of it. That's how I feel. Uh, we could potentially curb power creep a little bit, maybe make the game more interesting. Again, I'm a casual player. I don't know what I'm talking about. These are just uh, thoughts of an old man rambling about Digimon. Uh, some things that I think would be cool. I don't know how healthy they would be, obviously. Again, not a game designer. But um, I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, what do you think about these ideas? What are your ideas on what Digimon really needs? What kind of new flavor could be introduced to the game uh, to make it more enjoyable? Um, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.